welcome to Saving People Queering Things, the supernatural podcast where he wasn't going to mention it. Today, we're pulling up to season six, episode three, The Third Man. I am your host, Elena. My pronouns are she, they. And today I am joined by returning guest hosts and dear friends of the pod squad, Beth and Hannah. Would y'all like to to properly introduce yourselves? Well, I'm Beth. My pronouns are she, her. We're from Raising Perdition. I watch Supernatural in three and a half weeks. That's my only claim to fame. <laughs> <laughs> That's magnificent. And how many, were all yes. of the seasons out when you did that? Yeah, it was in 2021. Good Lord. <laughs> I forgot that you did all 15 in three weeks. That's, that is a feat, my friend. Yeah, I don't recommend it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's probably not the healthiest way uh, no. for a person to watch a TV show. <laughs> not such a long TV show. Um, no, so I'm Hannah and my pronouns are also she, her. Um, of course, on Raising Perdition with Beth um, and... I watch Supernatural because Beth told me to. So that's that's where <laughs> that's where we're at. Yeah. Not only did I get brain not rot, in I three am, and a half weeks. No. I got brain <laughs> rot and then I said, I'm gonna infect anyone who will listen. <laughs> yeah. That's that's basically yeah. what happens. It's like once once you get and it, I made a mistake. You make it everyone else's problem. <laughs> Hannah wishes she yeah, could. Go I made back, the mistake but... of listening. Yeah, yeah people... but here we are. People in your life either become fans or they learn everything about the show against their will. And those are the only two options they get. Yeah. But my question for the day for y'all is what biblical object are you stealing to use against your enemies? Because that was a really fun little element of this episode. And I'm curious. I have to admit, I don't know many biblical objects. <laughs> That's totally fair. Yeah. I realized as soon as I typed it that I didn't either and was like, <laughs> oh, no. All of the ones I can think of are from pop culture. <laughs> well, here, let's I've, broaden I've it. Let's say like cross. mythological objects. So it doesn't necessarily need to be biblical, oh. like from other mythologies. Well, I was going to say, I did have one for the Bible. I was going to oh. say the cross <laughs> oh, and just crucify okay. uh, your your enemies. That's totally yeah, valid. It worked once <laughs> and yeah. more times after that. So, I mean, I don't have really anything so i'm gonna say instead of using it against my enemies i would rather just ignore them and you know not be near them so i'm going to use the baseball cap that annabeth has in the person jackson oh my god face. yes <laughs> accept that as, as a valid answer nine thousand percent we're going with other mytholo- myth mythologies yeah because my, my brain has been like deep into the the greek myth brain rot because <laughs> of percy jackson lately so i i'm on board with that um i i don't know why but it like my it's just where my brain keeps going um i want to i want excalibur like mm. that just feels like it would That's be fair. a dope piece of mythology to just like whip out at parties and be like hey gonna s- go slay my enemies now with this ancient yeah. epic sword that this really cool lady from the pond gave me so now that we have met our host for today, it is time to catch you up. If you haven't watched Supernatural recently, here's what you missed on the road so far. First, uh, our darling Beth is going to recap the show up to this point, which you have five whole seasons plus two. <laughs> so this is going to be a good time. All right. Three, two, one. We've got Sam and Dean, their mom's dead. Their dad's gone, but they found him, but now he's dead. Sam dies in the Demon Blood Hugger games. Dean sells his soul for Sam to come back. They try to stop the deal. They can't. Castiel, Angel of the Lord, raises Dean from hell. Ruby leads Sam to raise Lucifer from hell. Angels and demons both want the apocalypse. The boys stop it by Sam yeeting himself and three other guys into the cage. Dean goes to Lisa. Castiel goes back to heaven. But surprise, Sam has actually been back for a year and their grandfather is also there? Question <laughs> mark. Fantastic. <laughs> Nice. I love that was the really good. Ending to that most of all. <laughs> Your grandfather <laughs> also <did a> question. <laughs> that is such a good place to leave off uh for Hannah to recap <laughs> us into uh this week's episode, The Third Man. Uh are you ready, Hannah? Yeah. As as you'll ever be. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. All right. Count you in. Three, two, one, go. Okay, their grandfather is not specifically there today but (laughs) sam and dean go to check out a case that is very egyptian plague-like they call Cass, 
find out a piece of Moses' staff is stolen by an angel and is being used by a kid. They torture the kid, basically, to find the angel, Balthazar, who traded the kid for his soul. During the torturing, Dean is worried about Sam. Cass wants the things Balthazar stole back so he can fight Raphael, but Balthazar says no, and in the end, he destroys Raphael's vessel and releases his mark on the kid's soul, and that's basically it. Fantastic. Whew, I had to get Good job. I had to fit it in there. <laughs> I, mean, I, I can like, tell. I, I was looking at the timer. It's so clear now that y'all have done this a few times because you're you're both pros. Like I, I have no notes that I can that I can offer about. Uh, so now it is time for us to pick some music that is going to accompany us on this wild, wild journey. So here's what we have for the mixtape this week. Hannah, have you got a pick for us? I think so. It's It was really hard to choose for the overall episode for me, but I did pick a song for the way Dean's kind of feeling about Sam right now specifically. I chose Heartless by Kanye West. <laughs> oh, fantastic. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> He's just kind of like, what? You're being so kind of weird. Though. So true, though. <laughs> I love that. That is <laughs> so, so left, like, oh my gosh. I hope Beth has something that's also as equally as unrelated to the song <laughs> I have so that we can just cover Beth's the whole is, yeah. breadth of musical <laughs> experiences. Yeah, so I guess with mine, I just really latched on to the police in this episode and how awful the system is. Oh, um, okay. And, and so I have Fuck the Police by NWA. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, so true. broken Elena, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> so true, Beth. <laughs> so for my pick, I decided to go more abstract mm. uh, related <laughs> to the uh, the plague-like elements that are going on with the episode and also the dynamic that's going on with these brothers who are like at odds with each other as they're trying to figure things out. So my suggestion is the plagues from the Prince of Egypt. Oh, oh excellent choice. <laughs> I love the Prince of Egypt so much. That's such a good choice. Yeah, I, it was like the very first thing that popped into my head and I was like, wait, it's about two feuding brothers and how he wished that God had chosen yeah. someone else and also there's lots of like biblical plagues occurring and moses is there and it is moses, moses and is there yeah. as a suspect wow. oh excellent choice i, I love, love the that. diversity of this this little That's playlist what I'm we saying. Got. Like, <laughs> yeah it's a really interesting three songs well speaking of there being three things and there being three of us, uh, now that we've got that mixtape playing, it is time for this week's hunt. And today we are pulling up to season six, episode three, The Third Man, through the theme of instinct. Where do we even start with this one? I love, like, the montage that we get at the very beginning of, like, Dean just kind of being like, eh, I'm gonna kind of twist around and Sam is like, I am an absolute Terminator. This is fine. That whole interaction for Sam with the woman is so weird. I hate it. I had forgotten I hate it so much. how terrible it was. I think as the like season progresses, you understand why it's there, but I still don't like it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like it's one of those things where like, eh, I, I get why they put it there, but also did you have to? There, there are other ways to convey what you needed to say, guys. Yeah, I think so too. I think they just made it a little weird like weirder than it needed to be so it just feels out of character just it was yucky could have been different <laughs> the fact that he paid is like a really big red flag that i think leads to like what's going on um because in specifically i think it's like lazarus rising mm -hmm. when dean's like what did it cost because he's asking like what did it cost to bring me back from hell and sam's like you know i don't pay for the girl <laughs> That's like, what I was going to say. He specifically says that earlier in the show. Yeah. Yeah. So we've, we've already established that this is not within character for him. So it's like, it's, it's just one of many moments in this episode where we are being put in a place to realize that something is fucking wrong with Sam. Like Sam yeah, is yeah. not yeah. behaving under normal operating procedure right now. Mm -hmm. I did forget also how much I hate the body horror in this episode. Like Ugh. I had, I, for each of the the three deaths in this episode, I did not look at my phone. Like I was actively looking in a different direction. I, I like, turned nope. my phone like this to where I could like barely see it so that I could like, yeah, that figure was what out I what did. was happening, but like just didn't full on look. Because I was like, I need to know when to when to look at it again, but I also do not want to see yeah. like 
locust crawling in a person's brain no thank sure. you who does <laughs> Yeah. no nobody um yeah I didn't want to see it but I did watch it oh. <laughs> my, I'm like, like the opposite like it's like it's gross it's definitely gross but I'm not I can't not watch it I have to see what it is you're captivated like, how else <laughs> I am I'm like that's bat shit crazy I can't with body horror stuff anymore yeah. I, I can't do it it just mm. I'm like Bleh. yeah like no thank you yeah although the worst I, one <laughs> for me personally the worst is the first when oh yeah that I, I couldn't. absolutely mm -mm. Mm -mm -mm. absolutely I think for me it depends on how realistic it is like if it's a broken arm or something like that that's hard to look at you know but like something that could actually happen but mm. like watching a man like peel his face off of his face like I'm no, like ew, you. well peel his face off that's his weird face. but it doesn't it doesn't <laughs> freak me out that bad because like is that gonna happen probably probably not, not. <laughs> likely <laughs> Not likely that giant <laughs> bugs will infect my my brain right. and eat my skull. Right. So sometimes, like the chatter right. that they showed, sometimes it does feel like my brain is doing that. It's just not yeah. real. Mm. Sometimes my brain is just a a buzzing sound of locusts. Right. That's relatable. <laughs> just not the actual bugs. And I also like have to shout out like I I love the way that Dean fucking says things like a not normal human being ever like just yeah the, the way he words stuff sometimes i'm like dean what why and when he what was the line specifically when he was like oh listening to the guy with the bug in his custard like what the fuck who says stuff like that like this i know it's silly a guy scenario, but that's a weird way to describe it yeah he can't take it seriously no i think he's just yeah. It's just like a part of him to like, it like protects himself from like the horror yeah. of what he just witnessed. Yeah. He's like, I'm yeah. just going to call it custard because that's going to make <laughs> it better somehow. Yeah. I think that scene, the um, specifically the locust scene could have been so much better if like the hat just fell off like organically or something, you know, when yeah. he hit his head instead of or when his head goes down instead of them having to be like, do you hear that? Oh yeah, that was also that off. It's that locust. It. Like it's like Dora the Explorer. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like was it under the hat? <laughs> were they just like being considerate of the fact that they were having a conversation? It was like guys, right. shh, they're talking right now. <laughs> like no, locusts right. are fucking loud. Yeah, yeah. I feel like it would have been like shocking if like the hat just fell off and you were and like, they're just rain, like, crawling out. locusts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or they like flew out like yeah. a horde of them. Like that would have been like yeah yeah but and instead also, it's like they're the like dipping was, their toe into it how the guy was forming any kind of complete sentences yeah how much of it, like that's not that's not that's how, how he works. was dead already right like, no yeah, <laughs> like, you, your brain is gone already. you're dead yeah <laughs> no brain yeah, or at least comatose yeah <laughs> yeah something little, you're, you're not sitting there having a weird conversation and just being a little bit aloof about a bottle just a little sweaty yeah yeah just, just like just a little weird just a little sweaty you're not answering the door yeah. for the feds when right. mm -mm. well yeah eating your brain it's just no but hey this is the cw supernatural mm -hmm. exactly anything can happen so uh, we have to talk about uh what is one of the most iconic dean and cast moments i think um sure. yes the getting your feathery ass down here <laughs> um and then the pro the profound bond line yes um, yeah it just, is it is the reason why i wanted i picked this episode for us to be on in your season um yeah so <laughs> i was yeah i was yeah. really really excited that uh, like when we were going through and deciding like you know who's gonna be on which episode i was like if i'm not on the profound bond episode then i quit like it just <laughs> <laughs> I will say I was watching this episode and I was like did Beth pick this or did I because I can't see why I would have picked this episode <laughs> it was me <laughs> it was Beth <laughs> yep Which, yeah, like, I, I like that part sense. but it's like such a small part of the episode for me to have chosen I would have never <laughs> that is so me I like hone in on like certain specific mm -hmm. scenes and I'm like I don't care what's happening in the rest of the episode look at my little guys <laughs> Yeah, that's look that's at them. Very much the vibe. 
Because like I said, I had forgotten that this was the plot of the episode. I had it confused with the plot of another one, but I knew that this was the episode with, with the prayer and Cass immediately showing up. Like Cass is just immediately (laughs) Dean. And he tries to play it off. Like "Uh, I didn't come for you. And I'm just like, "Uh uh-huh. A likely story. (laughs) Yeah, you did. I I did put that in my cap, uh, in my caps, in my notes, all caps, please. Yes, you did Cass. Don't lie. (laughs) Yeah. You liar. Was he motivated? I also just like extra to come for the staff. Yes, but like it wasn't Sam asking; it was Dean. So like, of course he's gonna. Yeah, and the way that Sam reacts is just you like him better than me or something. And the fact that Cass just is like, yeah, he's just like just admits it openly. (laughs) He's like, well, duh. I just like I love how he like looks. He looks at Dean and says, like, I wasn't going to mention it. And it's like, they've had this conversation. He's like, I was, I promise I wasn't going to say anything. I swear to God. Like, I, I know that, I know that we've talked about, like, how meaningful <laughs> our hearts are to one another. However, I wasn't going to tell others. <laughs> like, it's just... I know you told me it would hurt Sam's feelings and I wasn't going to say anything to him. But he asked, like, yeah. what am I supposed to do? But your brother's being kind of annoying right now. And I'm just telling <laughs> it like it is. He's nerves. And he's like, I feel <laughs> are rusty right now. Yes. Right. And he's been gone for a year, quote unquote. Year is so funny to me. That's like, I know people love to talk about people skills and rusty, yes. but I think year is arguably so much funnier. Because so he's funnier. like, I don't it's know. Necessary. Yes. Yeah. It but it's because like he's been he's been not a person for a whole year. Right. And so he's like, I guess it's been a year. That's what you're telling me it's been. But like, I don't well, know. When I mean, Sam so says funny. hello and he's like, is that still the term? Like he's like i don't know (laughs) give me a break buddy time is very different when you're a celestial being (laughs) right oh my god and that was like as i was watching it this time i was just like i was like ah new gender just dropped multi-dimensional wavelength of celestial intent this is what i identify i do think it's so (laughs) funny that sam is so like pissed like he's just like pissy about it like jealous like he is he's like I don't I don't understand and it's like Sam Sam come on baby you get it you you, understand you know you know why you know Sam you're you're just living in your little bubble of delusion being like he's not gonna answer you I already tried yeah (laughs) Yeah. and just and also just like Dean's face when he says the profound (laughs) yeah I think that that's really funny that he like takes a moment to be like huh and then he's like anyway like let's not let's not dive deeper into whatever the hell you just said because I don't want to if Sam calls you could come and tell him you don't know okay don't just ignore him yeah like just immediately tries to move on from it like let's pretend this didn't happen (laughs) meanwhile the audience is sitting there like this is gonna rewrite my brain chemistry if that's okay with you Mm -hmm. it's just bananas (laughs) <laughs> he calls it uh when he's talking about the the weapon he calls it chuck heston's disco stick. <laughs> like what, what a, a pop culture reference to make and he's all over the place in this episode mm-hmm. yeah he really he does i he's he's reaching like peak levels of dean in this episode yeah i just enjoy that for him I feel like I have so many like little things just like <laughs> smallest little things that don't oh I don't I just like like Dean like parenting Ben like oh, so while he's that. while he's out and about I just think that's it's like so sad but it's so sweet and the fact that Ben would like call him and like yeah like Dean what do I do I broke something like yeah <laughs> I know you're lying Ben because I lie professionally yeah. <laughs> because I know <laughs> and because you're like 10 and it's very easy to spot it's so obvious in the beginning when Sam's like I actually need you to come over here and Dean's like okay but why he's like because like there's a case um and Dean's like who died made you boss like this like <laughs> shift in their like dynamic like Dean's like you would never talk to me like that <laughs> like what is it's just another pardon right it's just another like building block into like Dean being like something is going on with Sammy yeah like Sam yeah. would have never never spoken to him like that like he would have been yeah. maybe pushy yeah never demanding <laughs> and like just being like okay yeah call me when you get into town when you roll into town <laughs> like 
Right. Also, uh, Dean's getting a burger from Burger Heaven in that scene. <laughs> uh, I didn't. I didn't notice that detail. <laughs> that we're in burgers. The only thing you go when they die. That's <laughs> burgers That's go fine. when they die. <laughs> That's sad. <laughs> when he says to Dean. I can't care about that, Dean. I don't have that luxury. But also, like, if you think about, like, seasons four and five, like, he was just, like, season four, he was just, like, trying to figure out, like, oh, I'm a part of a system that is not good. Like, yeah, like, they're kind of, they're corrupt. And then in season five, it's just like, okay, we're in war. And now, like, he's kind of, like, left to his own devices, and he's trying to be in charge, but, like, they're still opposing forces. And so, like, he just, he's still just a little baby when it comes to, like, figuring things out yeah. yeah he's like he's still like he he may be this you know wavelength and celestial being but he's he's also just a little guy and he's just yeah. he's just doing his best he also looks extremely hot this entire episode <laughs> yeah it was a little rude like the whole like in the hotel room like him just like kind of like bickering with the brothers but like going around and like doing his spell like that yeah. was really like the the brow like he kept like looking at them like you guys are just like wasting my time very very hot fighting the other angel very hot <laughs> getting and bloody just yeah. like grabbed dean's hand and was like hi i'm gonna slice your hand open now like <laughs> right like use you and dean's like use your own he's like well i'm not a human so it wouldn't work well, i can't <laughs> yeah like geez cast consent matters okay <laughs> Right, Ask people before you slice their hands open for a spell. But that was the whole thing with angels. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm curious how y'all felt about, um, like, if you remember when you were first watching, how you felt about that reveal of like, there's an angel that's like making crossroad deals effectively. I mean, I watched everything so quickly that it kind of all just ran together. <laughs> but it was mostly just like, okay, well, that's different. That's weird. Like. I they're yeah. bringing in this whole like new lore anyways to souls in general and like how powerful they are and like mm -hmm. as like currency almost because like they've never really done that before in the past like crossroads deals it's like okay your soul's going to hell like you you find it, like the lore gets really really interesting and deep on souls this season and this is kind mm -hmm. of like where we really first start to kind of get that the beginnings of that mm -hmm. it's very mm -hmm. cool and we get Balthazar for the first time, we which do. I forgot this right. was his first episode, but I love him. <laughs> that V-neck is yeah. as deep as it can go. <laughs> yeah. And then his menage a, what's the word for French word for 12? What's the word, what's French word for 12? Use you? <laughs> Sir. <laughs> Sir, that's just an orgy at that yeah, point. Right. You can just say that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> let's all be real okay yeah let's, also let's call just it like, what it is like his and Cass's dynamic it was just like I just was smiling the whole time because like they clearly like really like each other but Cass is like I'm fighting a war and I thought you were dead and Balthazar is like I've been partying so like I don't know I'm not dead he's like yeah yeah I also really enjoyed the way that him and that other angel just like on destroyed Sam's car even though they could have easily teleported instead of like falling and hitting the car and then yeah. teleporting yeah. like that part was kind of goofy yeah. to me I was like this was clearly a plot device to destroy Sam's car right Sam right. being like my car it's so <laughs> funny to me like why do you care you just and feel in a, like, a different oh one. I'm so glad to see that thing go <laughs> I'm just like yay hey. right. <laughs> Dean's like silver lining <laughs> oh and the fact that they raced earlier and he's just like you know Dean. you know i wasn't racing you i was kicking your ass like such a good so brother funny. moment <laughs> i also, love like, that part like i'm glad that they kind of like got rid of sam's car because like that scene like shows like how ridiculous it would be for them to be in two different cars but like on the same case like that's so silly and then they're like well here's yeah. a perfect opportunity to get rid of the car <laughs> yeah they're like, let's just show it for a second and then we'll get rid of it. <laughs> and it's a dumb car. I mean, to be fair, like, obviously the Impala is impractical for what yeah. they do. Yes. <laughs> but like, yeah. Sam is just boring. Sam is just a car. <laughs> like, it doesn't have that, that just... personality that baby has. Right. There's, yeah. Like, it's not a, a charm. Car. It's like a, 
it's like a Dodge Charger, right? Like it's like yeah. a, a cop car, like isn't it? Like, like it like says it's to like him, a, it's like you know that plastic that like <laughs> this isn't yeah. a cool car. This is mm-hmm. a like oh <laughs> look at me, I got big dollar money kind of car. Like no. I wonder if it was more impressive when you watched it when like the episode aired, like if it was like brand Maybe. new, and you're like wow, look at Sam and his like fancy new car. <laughs> Well, yeah because it Maybe, definitely was yeah. it was a very popular car around the time in which this episode <laughs> came out like having yeah like I was into the show when it when this season was airing and that was like a big car but like it, even then I was unimpressed with it like I've always been unimpressed with cars and I think it was Sam just right. kind of being like oh look at me having this like you know really nice like souped up vehicle that's not this crusty old Impala but we love yeah. the crusty old Impala. She's our favorite. <laughs> yeah. But Cass specifically says, um, when a claim is made on a living soul, it leaves a mark, a brand. And I just can't help but think about a different mark, a different brand on someone's skin when they were raised from hell. Mm. <laughs> Interesting. Mm-hmm. So I wonder to saying... whom Stu could be referring. <laughs> Cass all dibs on Dean specifically yeah yeah <laughs> he said this one mine <laughs> nobody else's which is why he was so yeah. upset about Michael trying to claim the vessel that he already named. yeah pass <laughs> absolutely called dibs on that boy <laughs> yeah. I did feel so so bad for Aaron though oh yeah like sweet kid was absolutely just trying to like avenge his brother and really like like you said with your song choice kid said fuck the police and i oh, yeah he, he did. said he said fuck the police and kind of fuck god because he was like i prayed yeah. for god to punish him and he didn't answer but you know who did this guy <laughs> like yeah this one guy <laughs> this weird british guy <laughs> who gave me a stick yeah he said point it at the guys and i did and look what happened yeah. yeah. And something I think is actually, I feel like it's really interesting about this episode. Like, um, we, like, we probably like know that Aaron, like in the Bible was Moses's brother, but also like, it's his rod that brings the plagues in the Bible. It's Aaron's not Moses's. So uh-huh. it's like, they like fully followed what happens in the Bible with that. Like Aaron is the one who brings those three, you know, quote unquote plagues. And I think that's really interesting that they yeah. actually like used the name Aaron and had him be the one to start the plagues. Like, I just think that's really interesting oh. that See, they would have done that. Interesting too. Now that, that. you've mentioned that, I wonder, uh, do we know what type of wood the staff was made out of? Because I wouldn't be surprised to find out it was birch. Uh, I, I don't know. Birch. <laughs> right. That's true. That would be interesting. This is lore Not- that I didn't know. We have the internet. Ooh, almond wood. I looked it up and it says almond wood. Oh, okay. That would have been interesting. <laughs> but it's like maybe they used birch anyway because that is obviously a type of wood. Exactly. And yeah. like obviously the staff is made of wood. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. And I guess almond would have been a weird last name. Yeah. You know. <laughs> Hello, my name is Aaron Almond. That sounds right. like Aaron Almond. That sounds like a weird. If, if your name last name, name is Almond, Almond, no offense. <laughs> yeah, no offense, but if your name is Aaron Almond, that's crazy. Yeah. Um, that's awesome. Like, like what are the odds? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Please comment on this episode. Like send us a message and we'll send yeah. you a sticker or something. <laughs> I wanna know. Yeah. But yeah, I just think that's like they met they get or like they change up lore obviously on purpose all the time mm-hmm. christian lore especially um because they like it's not a christian show but i always think it's interesting when it's like almost spot on i just think mm-hmm. when why they, they make do that those reference you know? very intentionally uh, why yeah. why yeah. did they do that but why <laughs> that's why do you do that i'm constantly asking that when i watch an episode of supernatural <laughs> yeah well it's like but that's yeah. uh, but what i love about supernatural and its duality is you have like you know subtle biblical references like that in the same episodes that you have lines like tell Raphael to bite me like yeah <laughs> you know you right get the whole gamut of human experience with this show every week and it's I just wonderful so I, uh, I agree I really do love to um the way that uh 
Balthazar says to Cass, uh, you tore up the whole script and burned the pages. Mm -hmm. Like, we're always talking about meta in this show. Mm -hmm. And I just feel like that's one of the really good examples of, like, the show sort of winking at the audience being like, this is... This is what they did with the apocalypse. Like they they threw out the author's yeah. intent and started making their own story, which is I think, mm-hmm. especially by the end of the show, what Supernatural was really about. And I just think that it's nice yeah. to see that as far back as like something like season six. Definitely. And I think that it's 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 like flagging like Cass specifically. Like mm-hmm. it's not he like he wasn't like you and these bonehead boys you've got with you like it was like you specifically Cass ripped up the script because like from the beginning like Cass is the like the 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 one that pushes over the dominoes like he gives the boys like reason not reason but like like I'm thinking back to like season four finale when he's the one who chooses to fall from heaven and help Dean Dean couldn't have done what he did without Cass's help and so like it and and when you go throughout the show and we see later like this will continue to be a thing that's like Cass being yeah. this like agent of free will Chuck in the face and said we're making it up as we go exactly like it, it Cass being free will is not a new thing and it won't stop being a thing and so I like the wording but case. you could say that team free will isn't the same without the third man absolutely so true <laughs> Just on a small pop culture note, I really enjoyed the who's on first, what's on second reference. Um, what is second? Cass. And he's just like, don't start that. <laughs> so funny to me. And I'm like, please start that. I would actually love to see Jensen Ackles and Misha Collins do the entirety of that Abbott and Costello sketch. <laughs> and I think that that may be my new mission is to ask them to do that at a con. <laughs> and someone just brings a script and is like, hello, boys. <laughs> do this please fulfill this dream <laughs> one one last uh like silly little thing i'll say is i really loved when he picks up aaron and he just says portability and then the camera just pans out because they've just teleported <laughs> yeah yes that's a really like delightful moment kind of lighthearted <laughs> before you get to the moments that follow it which are like kind of hugely pivotal in dean yes. realizing something's up with sam Mm-hmm. Um, right but just that portability moment really made me giggle like way more than yeah. I thought I was going to <laughs> I I think that that moment after all of that is just so like we've kind of talked about how Cass being like I don't have the ability to care like I have there like there's a lot at stake and like Dean being the only person in the room who does care but then not he's kind of like letting himself because like Sam physically stops him from stopping Cass yeah. And like he, Dean could have done more to stop that from happening. Like he could have like moved, like also got physical with Sam to like be like, no, this is wrong. And so like they're kind of like all these they're either bystanders or like Cass is like literally doing it. And it, it's just considering it's an episode talking about like the oppression of like yeah, this like it's just I don't like it. <laughs> yeah. Um and we've yeah, seen it, Dean in the past, like advocate for other people and like not letting it happen. And he, and, and I think it just kind of like shows where that Dean is still getting used to getting back to hunting. And like, he's kind of like unsure about his place and like. Yeah. I mean, in this episode, Cass and Sam have very like, um, like leader energies going, like they don't give Dean any room to be the leader leader like he usually is Mm -hmm. and so like he maybe like not that it's not like an excuse for dean not to step in for this young black boy but like he feels like he can't because there's no room for him to do so yeah and he's worried about sam at the same time Mm -hmm. so like and you see the heartbreak on his face especially because like that like this kid is like almost the same age as ben yeah. And like he just yeah. got done being on the phone, like, you know, telling Ben, you know, like, you know, suck it up and, you know, have to do this. And so he's like, he's currently like the phase that he's in in life right now is that he's parenting someone of this yeah. similar age. And so mm-hmm. I feel like that's so difficult for him to just stand there and just watch that happen because I, I guarantee you he's thinking about Ben in that moment. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And 
like throughout the entire episode dean is the only person who cares about aaron um yeah he is the one who's like we're not just gonna like leave him here right and Cass is like well don't you think the police will take him home the police just shot and killed his brother and then right like oh god yeah covered it up and covered it up like no i don't think the police will just take him home like and, right. and they kind of yeah. like just leave it so we don't really know what happens. I hope that Dean was like, no, zap him back home now. Like, like yeah. I, they don't they don't address it. They so almost like, Yeah, they almost make it seem like a joke. Like Cass is making a joke. Yeah. You know, like, well, won't the police just take him home? Like it's supposed to be like, ah, like a sitcom moment. Right. You know? Like, no. And then like you have a transition. No, but like, no, it's That's kind of serious. Yeah. Operate in this town, very obviously. Right. Yeah. Clearly um yeah and then like at the end when they have balthazar where when do they put the holy oil on the ground uh, that was one by one question too i was like this is this is too convenient right like, like how did y'all know he was gonna wander to this exact spot near the staircase you didn't while Cass was having a conversation with balthazar dean and sam were just going throughout the house and making random circles of holy oil <laughs> They're just running in circles with holy water. Yeah. They're like, they'll, they'll get in one eventually. <laughs> like, just put one in every room and hope. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah. But even then, like, Dean's the one who's like, you're going to, like, remove your claim on Aaron's soul. Um, and and yeah. Cass does have his back there. And it's like, I believe the hairless ape has the floor. Um, which is funny. So funny. I think... <laughs> I think that that's when Balthazar is like, okay, so Cass is completely head over heels in love with this man. Right. Yeah. The way he looks between Dean and Cass isn't Mm -hmm. just like, oh, okay. It's like, he has like a moment of realization. He's like, Like, oh, oh, oh. I I just like to think that like the topic of Castiel and the Winchesters has been so like prominent in heaven. And then like Balthazar is seeing it for the first time, like in his face. And he's like, oh. Oh, this oh, makes that's more it. sense now. Yeah. <laughs> right. Right. Like, um, Balthazar just had a menage a French for 12. So, like, he knows what it looks like. Like, oh, right. people are interested in it. And if, so he's if like, anybody is out there thinking that that menage or whatever was only women, they are, no. I'm they're sorry. They're wrong. Yeah. Balthazar <laughs> is Statistically, very, it's unlikely. Like, has that's such crazy. bisexual energy. It's not even, <laughs> yeah. like, it's so off the charts. Um. Oh, one moment that I, I had never really like latched on to is so Cass is like trying to get the other angels to stop and like listen to him. And he's like, why will you, none of you listen to me? Like, why are you just like basically being a pawn for Ra- Raphael? And um, Raphael like attacks him and he's like, because their hearts belong to me. And I just want to flag that language because so often people are like, well, Cass doesn't have feelings. Cass doesn't have a heart because he's an angel. Angels don't have feelings or hearts because they have used that language in the past but usually that's from like dean and being like you're heartless because he's just like he's dean. like like he's being dean he's like provoking them but like that's an angel yeah. being like their hearts belong to me meaning that there is like i'm not saying that they have hearts like as multi waves as angels yeah as, like, like angels and as that, like but, a concrete concept right but like as like their loyalty and like they have allegiances yeah but yeah, who, that's a really good point. who has know. who has castiel part <laughs> well <laughs> i think i think know. of at least one hairless ape um <laughs> <laughs> it's not <laughs> sam that's for not sure. sam no <laughs> <laughs> that's what we that learned in this episode we're damn sure yeah sorry sam Oh, and I do love how how Dean just screams freaking angels like it just oh, when Cass leaves though and he's like Cass Cass like he sounds so mm-hmm. sad yeah I had never noticed like how sad Dean sounds mm-hmm. when he disappears and I'm like oh my god like tentacles why he just lost his man's again like he was just like mm-hmm. man I was really hoping like we could like talk after like it's been a year. And because right. he's also feeling so weird about Sam, very clearly, which he's, actually yeah. that's a really that's a really good like last kind of main discussion point that we can lead into is the the end of the episode uh, when he confronts Sam about like mm-hmm. how unfeeling he's being, and Sam's just trying to be like, yeah. no, I'm just built different. 
I'm just they're, not you. They're different. Yeah. Yeah. He said, I'm not like other girls. I'm yeah. different. <laughs> yeah. Um, and Dean's like, are you saying that you're stronger than me? And she's like, no, we're just different. He's like, I'm not saying that. You're saying that. And <laughs> I'm not it. denying it. <laughs> Which like for Dean, just like immediately putting up that wall and being like, this is about, well, I need to be stronger and tougher and the bigger brother who, you know, handles things better and like feeling inadequate about himself in in yeah. thinking that he's not able to do that right now. Like that part just- To be fair- like uh there's been a lot of times in the past in this show where sam has told dean he's not strong enough for something so So, like it's totally valid that dean would be like are you saying again that i'm not as strong as you getting flashbacks to the fucking siren episode (laughs) oh right he's in season four all over again and he's like oh my god sam i thought we were past this and he's yep. he's hurt his feelings are hurt if he's not his over that like it's been three seasons bro yeah his yeah. feelings and are Sam's hurt. like no yeah sam's like i'm not saying that because i've said it before you already know dean <laughs> you know that i think that not a surprise yeah his feelings are hurt. Sam's yeah. acting weird, and Castiel disappeared. Overall, bad day for Dean right. Winchester. Yeah, Dean is yeah, not no. having a good time. My poor no, little guy. Poor, poor little guy. Yeah. Well, that that feels a really good point uh, to segue us into our last segment, uh, which is our blessings. So, as we wrap up, um, let's let's get to it. Who's who's got a blessing to start us off? I can start. I don't mind. Um, I just think I'd like to bless Aaron. Yeah. Oh, needs, thank you. I'm so glad you something. took something. <laughs> Somebody had to, because yeah. that poor guy, you know, he needs it. Like he, he I hope he got in. home safely. Yes. He, Aaron hope- and his um, grandpa, dad, I can't remember what that relationship is, but both of them. I think it was his dad. Um, yeah. His dad. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah very very true i think that they they're the most deserving of the blessing this week for sure they go through it for sure yeah Yeah. um and then they just had like three guys pop in on them make them fall asleep randomly torture um one of them the child like yeah they've been going through a lot yeah (sighs) yeah okay um i'm gonna bless Castiel. I feel like he's oh really gosh, going I'm through. I'm so surprised at this shocking turn of events. <laughs> no one could have guessed. <laughs> no <one>. Um, <laughs> I just think that he's clearly under a lot of pressure right now. He's going head to head with an archangel. Like that is not an, an archangel that has beef with him even before all this mess happened because of like this archangel already killed him once in the end of season four and then in free to be you and me cast trapped him and threatened him and then now here he is in civil war and he just needs like why is Raphael always showing up when they're having like supreme (laughs) dna like moments right that's because heaven doesn't want it (laughs) they're yeah (laughs) heaven's a little homophobic and they're like "Mm -mm." (laughs) send Raphael get him out of Send here Raphael to break up that shit yeah <laughs> that is no much. gay shit on oh our watch God. yeah <laughs> <Heaven's> a... <laughs> I love it oh my gosh that's that is a very good blessing um I I'm gonna to the surprise of no one I'm gonna bless Dean yeah. um because that's that awesome. last moment of the episode oh poor mm-hmm. baby he's he's not having a good time he doesn't he doesn't know what's going on with Cass. He doesn't know what's going on with Sam. Um, he wants to be home with Lisa and Ben, but he can't do that. And so I just, I feel like Dean is a character pulled in many different directions at the moment. And mm-hmm. it, he could use a hug and a very sound of a nap. Yeah. 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 And if anyone's upset, we didn't bless Sam. Sam wouldn't even accept it if we tried. Yeah, right now. He, he <laughs> so, not in the mood. He's not in the mood for any blessings. He wouldn't. He's not. It. He'd say, save him. Bless Dean instead. He's not as strong as I am. Yeah. <laughs> so. He's just built different. He's just, he, built, doesn't, he's, yeah. he doesn't. Yeah. Yeah. He's just blessings. Don't even touch him. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> exactly. And that's not our fault. <laughs> no. <laughs> 
Just watch the show. Well, thank you both so, so much for joining me today. This was like really lovely. Um, It's been too long and I enjoyed having you so much. Thank you. We, thank um, you. I mean, I'm speaking for Hannah, but we really enjoyed being back. So. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it was a good time. Make sure you're subscribed to Saving People, Queering Things wherever you listen to podcasts and share the show with your friends. You can also join our free Discord server, find links to our socials, and catch up on the latest season mixtapes all at our website, queeringthingspodcast.com. Also out now, Queering People Saving Throws. Our main crew, along with KJ of Supernatural Opinions, are taking a dive into a queer D&D adventure releasing every other Friday right here on our feed. Be sure to ride along with us next week as we explore Season 6, Episode 4, Weekend at Bobby's, through the theme of failure. Thank you all for coming along for the ride, and we wish you a peaceful road until we meet again. 